Hello and this is a play to back. Yes, no matter how to play today, we're gonna have to play this game win. A long sought game from Chris Handy and um, Perplexed. One of their pack of game series of games where you can get eight games in a package that small little bubblegum sized games like this. It's the size of a like a, a Wrigley's gum pack. So it's kind of cool that small little games. This packs a lot of game into a small deck of cards. Every card is like double sided and it does something. It's a little horse racing game for two to four players, ages 14 and up, in about 25 minutes. Number 17 in their series. And it is ranked three for challenging. It's a more challenging game than what some of the other ones that I have. In it, you got all sorts of stuff. You got these free cards that form the track. You have six horses, very double-sided. On one side, you have an A. The other side, you have a B. They recommend using A for your first game. I think you can also just mix them up, do A's and B's if you want. For instance, this one says here, they have different abilities on them. This one says, you will add two to a horse in last place, but you can flip it over. The other side, it's two to all horses in last place. So keep that in mind. Uh... We also have each player is going to have uh, each player is going to choose a money marker. I set this up, and the third player will put theirs on number eight, and then everyone else is going to put theirs on number nine. If we need four players, it's going to be four of them. This is going to indicate how much money you have to spend. Right now, I have eight; they have nine, so I'm at a slight disadvantage. And when you spend money. Like, say I spend $3, I'm going to move this down. And eventually I can add more money and go back up. Make sure you have this arrow side pointing this way. This side has $10, this side has 20 and 30 I think that's if you ever get more than $9, you just rotate it to sell that. I don't know how often that happens. And that's my guess anyways. You have this bookie where you can place bets. Same on both sides. Uh, so this is for each different horse number. If somebody has a, already has a bet on that number, you have to pay an additional two dollars. It's three dollars a bet plus an additional two dollars if somebody's already there. So if I already had a bet on two, and somebody else wanted to bet on that one, they'd have to pay an additional two dollars. You also have to pay an additional two dollars in a bet if you decide to bet at the end of the race when you're up to horses are at eight or nine. It is a horse racing game. You will be moving these horses down the track. And the race will continue until three horses have crossed the finish line. And, <clears throat> and Eddie will score. And uh, what you see on the horse as well is they have numbers on them. These are the odds. So this has a 7, 6, 5 odds. So if this one comes in first place, you would multiply whatever you bid times 7. If it comes in third place, you multiply by 5. Those are multipliers for first, second, third place. If there happens to be a tie, um, then you go whichever is the lowest number of horse that would break the tie. For... Determining which one is furthest, that is in the lead. So if there's two that are in the lead, you will look at which one is a lower number, and that will break the tie. Illustrations, by the way, are by Clau Souza. That's cool. And the game is designed by Chris Handy, which I just mentioned. This is, if I didn't mention, it's a little card game based on a dice game, which is based on a board game. A board game and the dice game are called Long Slot. Hence the name, a Long Slot game. So, this is going to happen. We set up the racetrack. We set up those cards over there. We got the bookie off to the side there. For betting. Uh, we're actually going to scoot. Uh, maybe scoot over a little bit. No, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I don't get caught up on something. 
Uh, okay, what else do we got here? So every player has these start bet cards. Like I have this one here. It says I have a starting bet of two dollars on four and four dollars or two dollars on two dollars on two, two dollars on four. I cannot speak. Uh, on this side, you have accents you might be able to take on your turn or will be able to take on your turn if you want. What does that say? It's a golden fields. That's cool. But basically, the accents are well, I'll explain them in a bit. Each player also gets two of these cards with uh, starting money. $3 each, or $6 for each player to $3, and these are your, um, bet cards, I believe is what they're called, yes, bet cards, it's gonna be the same color as this card, you have different characters, and whoever the start player is gonna take these four cards, these are your run cards, and you'll soft them up and rotate them. And the reason is because, and you'll flip them over one by one. It's because they are double-sided, as you can see. For some reason, it isn't horribly out of focus, but you can see they're double-sided. Ignore this bottom part. You're only looking at the numbers you can see, not the upside-down ones. So on your turn, or whoever the start player is going to mix these up and lay them out. This fourth one is going to determine what horses are running and how much. Different numbers have three arrows pointed this way. And that tells you which horse is going to run three steps or three three spots, advance three, three moves. In this case, the four is pointing towards the five. The six is pointing at nothing. So it's the four that we're looking at. Whatever one is pointing to a number on the fourth card it happens to be this four. It's pointing at five, so five is going to move. One, two, three. And then the other numbers here, two and six, are each going to advance one. But don't worry, there's other ways to advance cards, as I'll explain. After this happens, each player is going to take an action uh, from, you know, start player going around the table until everyone's taking an action. So I would start. What are the different actions you can take? Well, first, you can place a bet on any horse. Well, actually, the first thing I have to mention is you can advance a horse. So I've already got bets on two and four, so maybe I want two as a head. Maybe I want two to move ahead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at how many twos appear on here. For each number, two, I would advance that horse one spot. So this, it appears three times. I would advance it three spots. So one, two, three. Then I would take one of those cards that has a two on it and I would flip it face down. The next player is going to go and you continue doing this. Uh, another action you could do, maybe the next player will do this, is you can place a bet. A minimum of $3 bet. They got, I'm looking at one in six. So maybe they place a bet on six. They're going to take this free, put it on a six, and then they would reduce the amount of money they have by three. One, two, three. This track is going to show you how much money you have. I think I mentioned that before. And again, I mentioned somebody else would now want to bet on six. They would have to pay an additional $2. And also, if you bet during those last two spots, it costs you an additional $2. So... You can use the numbers to move a horse ahead. You can place a bet, or you can also raise a bet, raising it from three to six. You can also do nine or twelve dollars, and you can also add more from here, or you can use this to bet on another horse. Uh, another action you have is. The cast accent. And you see there's $2 here. If a player wants, they can claim that and uh, add that to their score. Now, everyone's kind of over there. Nobody needs $2, so we're not going to do that accent. If multiple of these were here, you would add that up and you would get $4 instead of 2 or 5 or 6 or whatever. It's actually... 
a value. Yeah, this one's a three dollar one. Another thing you can do on your turn is you can do the deed. What is the deed? The deed is you do whatever action is on one of these horses. It has to be one of the horses that saw up here. And all but number three saw up here. So you can do kind of almost any of the actions. So maybe the next player takes one of those actions. Um, Which one would they do though? I mean, they, they don't really need money. They're all number nine. They can spend money. You know what? They're going to do number three. They're going to do action number three uh, on the deed, which. Actually, no, they can't because they don't have the number three horse, so. Hmm. I don't know which action they will take. Maybe they're not going to do the deed. But the deed lets you do one of these actions. They are different from one side to the other. Slightly. I think I mentioned that already. Uh, another action they can do. Aside from deed. Is they can eat. For each one of these little concession stands. That you see on a card. You can do an action. So maybe this guy is going to do eat. Instead. And you can do. You can spend two dollars. To move a horse ahead one. Three dollars to move one ahead and one back, or five dollars to move one back two. We're interested in one, two, and three, so they're gonna spend two dollars and move this one ahead one, and they're going to move back two dollars. Only that well in a row, <laughs> and then they're going to rotate one of these face down, and they can actually do that twice. So they're gonna do that twice. Why not? That was purple. And they're going to move his head again because they have, there was two cards, so they can do two actions. And once everyone has taken an action, we'll say this guy makes a bet on number five, we'll say. Now everyone's taking an action. We take these. Mix them up again. And deal them out. And we're going to move on to the next play. They're going to become the start play. Oh, look at all the money that's on the board. And they are going to look at these numbers again. Five is going to move ahead three again. So one, two, three. Five is a good horse, apparently. They all got different names here, like asset column. Just a little bit. I am not a crook. Tow truck. Lump of sugar. And deadbolt. And also we can see four and one are going to move ahead as well. Yay, one is in the race, so it's four. And then again, everyone takes actions. Again, you can do one of these actions. It has to be a number that is available. You can collect cash. Right now, somebody could collect, uh, what is that, eight bucks <laughs> if they wanted to. Later on, if like this one is gone, then you could just collect five dollars. It's based on the amount that's there. Nobody's going to be taking any of these uh, eat actions because there's no concession stands available. So people are going to be doing movements or whatnot. So this first player, he kind of wants one and six in the race. There's three ones, so he's going to move a one and he's going to cancel this one out. One, two, three. And then the next player takes their action. Maybe they make a, another bet, or maybe they increase their bet. Uh, no, nah, they don't want to increase their bet. Six, do they? Six is behind. But maybe they want to make a bet on one. <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, the next person does an action. They can't do a deed. Uh, we're going to collect cash. Five dollars of cash. One, two, three, four. And I guess this is where you go. Ten. Is that ten dollars? I'm going to assume that's how that gets used. And they're going to flip over one of the cash ones since they use that. The next player is going to go. <coughs> the 
they can do one of the acts. They're going to do the number three action. Add one to each horse that's behind. Number three, and they'll flip over a number three. And there is no horse behind number three. <laughs> so they'll just move that one. And I guess. Because there's none behind number three. That was a poor, poor execution. Then it comes to me, maybe I make a bet on two. And then we, you know, take all these cards, we shuffle, we deal. We're going to continue doing this until three horses have crossed the finish line. So let's say two makes it, let's say six makes it, or let's say six comes out from behind. Two is first, or five is first, two is second, and then you're going to get into square. Once three horses have passed the finish line, the game ends. They must pass the finish line through a run action and not by you advancing them across the line via this accent or one of these accents. In other words, there's different accents also that can let you move horses back. But we'll say these three make it. And then you're going to go on to scoring. And players are going to look at their starting bets. So I had this one, this guy had this one, this guy had this one. And this guy had this one. And you're going to multiply them with the three fittest horses' odds. And next, do the same for any bets placed at the bookie card. And add any remaining cast for a final total. So let's say people had cast over here. Now let's say this guy had a bet here. This guy had a bet here. So. I would get two times, I, I guess it was in fifth place, so it would be three, so it'd be six, six bucks that I would make, plus I have another s seven here, so that's 13, and I also made a bet here, so another three, so that's 16, I don't know if you count this. I got at least 16 bucks. Everyone else is going to count theirs. Again, you're looking at this uh, first place one. They would get nine times whatever who who had the five. This guy would get nine times two is 18. Plus whatever else he bid. He bid on the five as well and had a three. So he did really good. And of course, you can increase these as well. Add more. It's an interesting little game. And I like that everything is double-sided. Uh, everything... Has multiple uses. They make full use of all the cards. Every like little bit of space. So it's an interesting little game. The cards are very good quality. Linen fairness on them. Tiny, but good quality. And if a horse has finished the race, by the way, you can take him out of the game. And you can no longer bet on that horse. And also, you must have cast to pay for any actions that require it. So, yeah, it's an interesting game. Obviously, a little bit of take that since you can, like, screw with people and pull the horse back using actions and, you know, do different stuff. It's an interesting little game. I, this video is a little bit long. I do apologize. Comment, like, subscribe. Hopefully, that all makes sense. We'll see you next time with more. Make sure you win.